He brings something different to the team. His mentality and his quality to do certain things that allow us to be more unpredictable and to generate a lot of threat every time we're in possession of the ball. The words of Mikel Ateta on Zinchenko after his superb performance against Everton. This was his heat map for that game. Oh, wrong map. Apologies. This, th this is the correct one. 110 touches, 95 passes covering almost every blade of grass. And this is his hit map for the entire season. He would struggle to convince someone that he's an actual left back. Zinchenko has been in the Premier League since 2017, but only now do he get the sense that he's being appreciated. Not only in terms of his footballing ability, but also his leadership and know-how of the game. Not only by Arsenal fans, but also Premier League and football fans in general. But how did he get here in the first place? From being forced to sign a new contract to being exiled by his own club. From fleeing his country to relaunching his career in Russia. Yes, you had that right. From being loaned out to PSV's reserve team to winning Premier League titles and even having some time to rap? What? What? He's a rapper. No, God, please, no! The song wasn't that great, but it's still quite an interesting story. With that said, let's talk about Alexander Zinchenko. Alexander Volodymyrovich Zinchenko was born in 1996 in a historical city in northern Ukraine. He grew up as an only child in a middle class family. Unlike other kids during Christmas, he wasn't interested in receiving toys as his gift. All he wanted was a ball. He got it and would often play around in his living room, then later proceeded to the fields. He had his lucky break when he was called up to his local club at the age of 8. He was a very good observer of the game and would learn quickly. His idol was Chevchenko. He wanted to achieve what Chevchenko did. Score goals like him, win titles like him, play for the big clubs like him. Zini spent four years with Kapatia Youth Club before being acquired by Monolith, a more developed youth team. He continued to develop at a rapid rate and the breakthrough came in 2010, or at least he thought. Shakhtar Donetsk were impressed by his determination and offered him a youth contract, which he obviously accepted. That was the biggest academy, possibly the biggest team in Ukraine, a chance for 13-year-old Zinchenko to develop even more at a club that at that time housed the likes of Fernandinho, Douglas Costa, William, Mkhitaryan and many more talents. No chance he would have known that joining Shakhtar's academy would end up stifling his career. His time there started well, he even ended up being captain of the academy, but problems developed after that. See, Shakhtar offered him a contract extension because he was literally the best player in the academy. There was one catch though, the only plans were for him to play in the academy and not in the first team. Of course Zini wanted a first team opportunity in the upcoming years, in fact he felt he was already ready despite being only 16. So he didn't sign the contract just in case any other team offered him first team opportunities. Usually the academy would let you go but Shakhtar weren't going to do that, they had a special talent so they didn't want to lose him, so they basically basically forced him to stay. You sign the contract and you keep on playing in our academy or you don't sign a contract we still keep you but you don't play. In his own words, they said if I don't sign then I won't play for them, even for their youth team. So for about 4 months I was depressed. I just attended every training session but didn't play, I was on my own exile. Around the same period, the Ukrainian war broke out and his parents decided to move to Russia. There, he continued playing football with his new friends. He even managed to catch the eye of Russian club Rubin Kazan who wanted to sign him. That was not going to happen though, not on Shakhtar's books. Knowing the contract situation, no team wanted to involve themselves and Zinchenko was forced to run out his contract without playing a single game for close to two years. Thankfully for him, that ordeal finally ended and he was a free man. Some would fall out of love with the game after going through all that. Not Zinchenko though. If anything, he developed a strong backbone and a never giving up way of life. It immediately paid off. FC Ufa of the Russian Premier League, which was actually the local team of the city he and his parents had relocated to, signed him to their first team in the 2014-2015 season. He played 33 games across two seasons for the club. Let's take a look at where he played for the 33 matches, the positions he covered. 14 games as a right midfielder, 10 games as an attacking midfielder, 5 as a left back, 3 in central midfield, two in left midfield and once as a defensive midfielder. He pretty much played in every single position apart from the goalkeeper role. 
This sort of players are rare in our sport, so it was only a matter of time before he would end up joining one of the top five European leagues. Dortmund showed interest, but it was Man City who swooped in and got him for 1.7 million pounds. Guardiola had just joined City, so things were still in the getting to understand the manager stage. And as a result of that, and everything being new, he was loaned out to PSV, where he played for half a season before moving down to the reserve team for the other half. Not sure what that was all about. Anyway, he returned to the Etihad for the 2017-2018 season, but as you would expect, he found it difficult to break into the first team. One thing that Pep did was to convert him to a left back. He had spotted something and wanted him to train only as a left back. He did that, but there was always competition. I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of game time. These were the best players in the world, so I had to work extra hard. Unfortunately, he was never really able to make the position his own. The most Premier League games he ever played in a single season was 20 and 32 in all competitions. And in majority of the situations, he was used as a sub. On a positive note, he got to play alongside the likes of Company, Aguero, David Silva and learn from arguably one of the best managers ever in Pep Guardiola. And on top of that, he became the youngest ever player to captain Ukraine. Due to the lack of first team opportunities, Zini reunited with his former assistant manager Mikel Ateta at Arsenal. 32 million pounds was what Arsenal had to pay. He assisted on his debut and recently scored his first ever Premier League goal. Despite missing several games with injury, he has already made 18 Premier League appearances for Arsenal. Remember the most he played for City was 20, so he'll easily get past that number. He's featured 22 times in all competitions. He needs only 11 more to break the appearance record during his time at City. If he can stay fit, he'll do that easily. With teams doubling up on Saka and Odegaard, he has become a vital ingredient in helping Atita's team open up opposition sides, a playmaking left back. Let's be honest, we only call him a left back because we need to actually call him something. He brings a completely different dimension to the team, allows us to play the way we want to. He's been there and he's done it. He's got four out of five Premier League titles, so he knows what it takes to win. His journey has not been easy, but it's definitely been worth it. What do you think about Zinchenko and how good do you think he can become? Personally, I already think he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> it's Friday, day, day, Sunday, Sunday, no. It's Friday, day, day, Sunday, Sunday, It's Friday, day, day, Sunday, Sunday, No, God, please, no! No!